Welcome to our service this morning at the Rimby Alliance Church. We appreciate those who are here in attendance with us this morning and your, your faithfulness and support. And for those that are joining us online, uh, we wish you were here with us, but we recognize not everyone can be. So welcome to our service this morning. I'll say it this way, we are still continuing in our series on one another, uh, which are the commands in the New Testament based on the Greek word alelon, one another. To date, we've looked at the commands to bear one another's burdens, to grudge not against one another, to use hospitality one to another, to love one another, to pray for one another, to care for one another, to confess your faults one to another, and to forgive one another. This morning, I'm going to ruffle a few feathers. This morning, we are looking at a word that many of us don't like. Can anybody guess what it is? What is one of those biblical words that, that people just don't like to hear? Forgive. No, it's not forgive, although that does apply. <laughs> Submit. We will look this morning, we are told in more than one passage, but in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 is where we will look this morning, Ephesians chapter 5. We are told we are submit to submit to one another. I came across an illustration this week why it's important to have the right attitude toward one another. There was a group of guys that went overseas for work, and while they were there, they hired a local boy to cook and clean for them. Being a bunch of jokesters, they quickly took advantage of his seeming naivety. They smeared Vaseline on the stove handles. They put buckets of water over the doors. And during the night, they nailed his shoes to the floor. Day after day, the young boy took the brunt of their practical jokes without saying anything. Finally, the men felt guilty about what they were doing. And, and they said, look, we know these pranks aren't funny for you and we're sorry. We're never going to take advantage of you again. The boy smiled and asked, no more sticky on stove? The guys responded, nope. No more water on door? They answered and said, no more water on door. No more nail shoes to floor? Nope, we'll stop that too. Okay, the boy said with a grin, no more spit in soup. <laughs> it is important for us to have the right attitude because sometimes it comes back to bite us. We need to have the right attitude before the Lord. I appreciate the songs this morning. Change my heart, O oh God, because that is where this comes from. Create in me a clean heart. We need to come to the Lord and, and, and have our attitudes revised, renewed before him. This morning, let's look to the reading of God's word in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord." giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we ask that, that as we've sung before you, as we've brought this offering of, of, of praise and worship to you, that, Lord, renew our hearts Create a right spirit within us that, that our attitude reveals who we are, not as individuals, but who we are in you. That we may, we may be seen and recognized for being children of the Most High God. May your love and your grace and your mercy shine through in, in who we are, knowing that it doesn't come from us, but it comes directly from you. May our lives be a blessing to those around us. Oh, Lord. Use us, this we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a confession to make. One of the reasons why, um, and, and I'll use the generic term, why we as pastors like to preach on a series is you always know where you're going. 
And so as you're doing research or you come across things, you, hey, I can set this aside and, and save it for later. The problem is, as we age, we forget about the things that we've set aside. So I have a collection stored somewhere at home of, of things that will be good to use in sermons, and I forget to go look at it and don't know what all is there. But I came across just recently an illustration from the Daily Bread that, that really sums up this submit one to another. It, it, it sums up the, the concept of it. On April the 8th, the, uh, the title of the devotional for that day was Love Reigns Us In. So from the Daily Bread. What it was referring to is Samoan culture. And it's called Fa Samoa, which means the Samoa way. And what it is, is the Samoan way is, is really about community. It really is. A large part of their lives is devoted to community and family. And the Samoan boys are honored when they are given a tattoo. Because the tattoo shows their respect for their culture. It shows that they are being recognized and their involvement as part of the community and out of respect to their chief. So I looked looked at a Samoan site, and here's what they say about their tattoos. The Samoan tattoo, or tatau, as it is known traditionally, is deeply tied into the culture of Samoa. It is done as a source of pride in their heritage and culture, and to be offered the chance to be tattooed for young Samoan men is a very high honor. So if you wonder why, when you see the Samoans or even some of the other nationalities in that area, they wear their tattoos with pride. It, it, it shows their culture. There's meaning to it. It, it shows respect for their culture and, and their chiefs and their authority. However, um, how many of you have watched the men's rugby team play from Samoa? It, it, it's quite intriguing. They have a, I'll call it a ritual called a haka. Their particular one is the Sivatau, and I may pronounce that word wrong. But anyways, it's a dance that they do. So the whole Samoan team comes out on the rugby field, and before the match starts, they get down in this crouch, and they snarl and spit and stomp and, 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 and do all of this. And it's meant to be intimidating, but it's also representative of who they are and their culture. It's very important to them, but here is the thing. On occasions like back in 2019, the Rugby World Cup was held in Japan. And in Japan, their culture takes a totally different look at tattoos. In, in fact, tattoos are perceived negatively. Yeah, there's many negative connotations. So, for the Rugby World Cup in Japan, the Samoan players all chose to wear flesh-colored um, arm sleeves that covered up their tattoos. It wasn't something they were asked to do. It wasn't something that they were directed to do. They chose to give up in a way, to give up part of their identity, part of what was important to them, out of respect for another culture and group. And, and, and the, the closing comment in Daily Bread said this, At times, loving another means limiting our own freedoms. We don't have to always do everything we are free to do. Sometimes love reigns us in. So the Samoan rugby team gave up, in essence, part of their identity, not giving it up, but not making a point at that time of expressing themselves the way that they normally would, out of respect for another. And that really is the concept here when we think of submitting to one another. It's maybe we have ideas or freedoms that, that we can express, but we choose not to because we respect other people. It is relevant. Again, the Samoan team was not asked to cover up their tattoos. They did it voluntarily. They took it upon themselves to act appropriately and respectfully. And that's, that's really the theme to this morning's message. We as a group, as we come together, how do we act appropriately and respectfully within community. Verse 21 in Ephesians 5 says this, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. We see almost the same words, and again, these are from Paul in Ephesians, but in 1 Peter chapter 5, we see very similar words. 1 Peter 5 verses 5 through 6. 
Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. It's the same Greek word that's used in, in both passages. So in Ephesians 5 and in 1 Peter 5, we see the same Greek word. Again, in Ephesians 5.21, the King James translates it as submit. And in 1 Peter 5.5, 5, it's translated as be subject to. But the Greek word comes from hupostoso. And it does mean to arrange under, to subordinate, in subjection or submit. It's actually a Greek military word. And, and it means to arrange troops in a military fashion under the command of a leader or in non-military use. It was a voluntary attitude of cooperation and sharing a burden. A voluntary attitude of cooperation and sharing a burden. The picture that that given is that we draw together. We draw, draw together for a, the purpose of a common good or goal. But as it's given here in these two passages, it is the non-military sense. We do it out of preference for one another. Rather than stressing our own personal opinions or ideas, we welcome the input of others. It's not to say we don't have individual thoughts, ideas, or expressions but we are willing to lay them aside as an expression of love and unity. So there are a couple of things that, that as we, we look at Ephesians 5.21 and 1 Peter 5.5, 5, there are a couple of things that it does not mean. In both these instances where the Greek word hupostoso was used, it is stated along with the word that we have been studying, alelon. So we see this aspect of submit one to another. So that we know that it's not being used in a military sense. Um, because in the military, they have a very definite, distinct chain of command. And, and if, if that's the way that Paul and Peter were speaking here, they would say, submit to authority. Where do we see that? Uh, Romans 13.1, as an example, we are told to submit ourselves to authority as God has given it. And, and that's not the sense it's used here. But we recognize as we read it in Scripture that there is authority that is God instituted that we are to respond to. Romans 13.1 reads this way. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God the powers that be are ordained of God. And there's a continuation of that thought throughout there. But we see this aspect being subject unto authority. It is a scriptural principle. But it's not what's being used in Ephesians 5 and 1 Peter <clears throat> chapter 5. Because it's combined with one another. This is something that is across the board. It is equivocal. We are meant to submit one to another. Back and forth. Reciprocal. It's a level playing field. We've talked about this before, that God is not a respecter of persons. And, and, and what that means is that God loves each of us equally. He may have given us different responsibilities and gifts, abilities, or tasks, but he loves us equally. In his eyes, we are on the same level. And that's what this is saying here. We are to submit one to another as equals. We are to share reciprocally. So, this doesn't say... Submit yourselves unto those that feel they are in lordship over you. That's not what it says. It says submit one to another. Come together as equals. Look for opportunities that we have to share one another's burdens, to support, encourage one another. It's not where we assume authority over someone else, and it's not where we give up anything to someone else who feels they have authority over us. But we are to submit to one another deliberately and intentionally, looking for opportunities to demonstrate our love for one another. They don't address other people's attitudes towards us. They address our attitudes towards others. Submit yourself, our personal lives, unto others with one another. We're to look out for their best interests as we come to know and understand them without asking to do so. Again, the illustration of the Samoan men's rugby team. They did this voluntarily without being asked to do so. When Barbara and I lived in, in Edmonton, 
Um, for a period of time, I would ride the city bus uh, to and from work. We lived out in West End of Edmonton, uh, near West Edmonton Mall. Uh, I worked at the Edmonton Journal in downtown Edmonton. Uh, when I drove, the fastest I ever made it was 45 minutes. Um, so typically it was an hour or so commute, and, and I shouldn't say commute, being still within the city. But on the buses, it was frequently longer because you've got all the stops along the way. Being brought up, I'm not reflecting on myself, but my parents, being brought up in a conservative, good, old-fashioned family, one of the things that I was taught is to act respectfully towards others. And, and so I, I'll say it this way. I struggled with Edmonton. And the reason being, I came from a rural community, the town of Didsbury, where literally, if you didn't know somebody, you knew who they were, who they were connected to. And, and so it was my pattern. I would just openly smile at people and say hi. And you try that in the city of Edmonton, and it's sort of like, well, who are you, and, 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 and what are you trying to do? But, but on the buses, quite often, if I was sitting there and, and, and a lady came along, and, and it was just natural to get up and move aside and let them have, have the seat. That was, was natural on, unless I was sleeping. And I did that on the buses once in a while. I would fall asleep. But, but if I was awake, I would do that. Um, I enjoy watching a show on TV called Just for Laughs Gags. And, and they set up some things as pranks so they can film people's reactions. And one of the ones is they set up this clinic in, in a mall and they had people sitting there and, and the gentleman came along and there was an elderly lady that was not with him but was there as well. And he'd look at people and he would nod at the lady, look at people that were sitting down, nod at the lady, never having said anything but give the impression he was suggesting that they move, that this lady might take a seat. And as soon as these people stood up, he would sit down pull out a paper and start to read it. And, and it was just wonderful to watch people's reactions. They would just glare at him that he would have the audacity to, in essence, steal their seat under, under the pretense of this, this woman. But because that's our society. That's really the, what we're taught. We're taught to show respect for other people. And, and, and we should. And especially within the church. We should show respect. For others, I came across an illustration. I've used it before, but I just like it. There was a gentleman who, who walked up to a door. There was a woman coming along behind him. He opened up the door so that she could go ahead and go in. And, and, and she told him, you don't have to do that for me. I am a woman. I am strong and independent. You don't have to be that way. Um, and, and he looked at her, and her words were something to this effect. Ma'am, you, you may not be a lady, but I'm still a gentleman. <laughs> And, 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 but you see, that, that's what we're being told here in the scriptures. It is our, our responsibility to submit to one another. Why? Because God calls on us to treat one another with respect and deference. We are to be respectful one to another. Again, in 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6, we see this out of humility. 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6, again, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. It's a wonderful picture that Peter paints here. A picture that we are out of this aspect of submitting ourselves one to another, that we are to do it out of humility. The term that Peter use, uses here, at least as it reads in the King James, is be clothed with humility. In the Jewish culture, uh, servants, those that were indentured, wore a badge, which was sometimes an article of clothing that was tied on. And, and this signified who and what they were. And so what Peter is saying is be clothed with humility. Wear this, tie this on proudly that others see and know who you are. And our Lord has given us a wonderful example. In John chapter 13, the beginning of the Last Supper, as the disciples gather with Jesus, what does he do? Washes their feet. Amen. He strips down to his underwear, ties a towel around himself, washes their feet, and dries them off. He clothes himself in humility. What a wonderful example. The Messiah, the Master, the Savior, the Teacher, their Lord, and yet in the midst of that, he washed their feet. He wrapped a towel around himself and wore it like a badge of honor. That is the example we have. Submit to one another in humility. 
That's an example of how we are to be. Let me give you an example of what we're not to be. In the book of Mark, chapter 10, looking at verses 35 to 45. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldst do for us whatsoever we shall desire. Oh, there are so many things wrong with that statement. I, I, I just can't imagine the, the audacity, but I'll read it again. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we should that thou shouldst do for uh, we would that thou shouldst do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit, one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand, in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. But Jesus called to them, and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so, but so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. There, there is so much in this passage to look at. But again, this morning, we're only looking at this aspect of submission. James and John came to Jesus looking for recognition. They, they wanted to be uh, established on the right and the left-hand side of Jesus as he sat upon his throne, which automatically means the other disciples would be left below them. And as the other disciples heard uh, the word that's used here, they were displeased. The other disciples were a little bent out of shape that James and John would go looking for this, this favor. And Jesus' response to them, ultimately was this. If you truly want to follow, be prepared to serve and to suffer. The greatest of you will be the least. This is what turns Christianity into gospel. It's not looking for how we benefit, but it's looking out for others and promoting their interests. We are called as Christians to sacrificial living. This is the Lord's example. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Does this sound like any church that we've ever been part of? Jockeying for position, those who have their own best interest at heart? I'm going to say this this morning. Don't hold it against the church. It's human nature. It's just as we see the, the, the twelve before Jesus and James and John say, we're the first ones to ask, what, what do we call it, dibs? We're calling dibs, right and left hand. We've got them. This is human nature. And Jesus says, no, that's wrong. This is not how we look at it within the kingdom, within the community. It's what can we do for one another. Jesus' words, to be the greatest, you must be the least. I asked this morning, what are we willing to give of ourselves? Not what are we looking to get, but what are we looking to? to give. I've mentioned that the, what, what got me started on this one another um, thought was a book by Pastor Wayne Hoag, and his, he wrote a book called The One Another Project. This is a quote from that book. Pastor Hoag wrote, when I'm willing to submit to you and walk in a respectful manner with you, the first thing I'm doing is honoring God. It's an act of worship. A refusal to submit to one another holds Christ in contempt. God didn't call us to see one another in the light of our profession, our social standings, or our gifts, but in the light of Christ. This is how we are to look at one another. Back in Ephesians chapter 5, I, I, I want to read through three or four verses there because I want us to see that, that all the way from verses 18 through 21 are tied together. 
at least in the King James, there, there's no period in between where it talks about the Holy Spirit and then continues through. There's a series of semicolons, and, and I had looked in the NIV, and in the NIV, that's just a series of commas. So there's not a complete thought until we get to the end of verse 21. So let me read this statement, Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. And be not drunk with wine where is, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. We are in agreement. The Word was not written by accident. Amen? It is inspired, intentional, deliberate. And so where we're told to be filled with the Spirit, and in so in being filled with the Spirit, that what will result from that is that we worship together. Our heart is in tune with God. We are to give thanks for all things to God in Jesus' name and submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God that is all one thought. In through the Holy Spirit, we are to submit ourselves to one another in the fear of God. And I know that some of the versions, they use the word reverence rather than fear because it does apply. The Greek word that's used is phobos, and it's where our word phobia comes from. But it, it does mean fear. It also means reverence and respect. We are to submit to one another. And as much as we love one another, our, our love isn't because of who we have for one another, but because of what we have for God. It is because of our reverence and our fear of God and who He is and, and His work and influence in our lives that we treat one another respectfully and we submit. It is done out of fear and reverence for God. Does that make a difference? I'm not submitting to you because I hold you in authority over me. But I'm submitting to you because I respect God and His holy word tells me I am to walk beside you and carry your burden. That's really what it is. I am to walk beside you and carry your burden because God, whom I respect and love, has told me to do so. Let me ask a difficult question. Am I doing that? And I mean that sincerely. Please don't stand now and give examples when this thing is being taped. <laughs> If I am not fulfilling my responsibilities and obligations, sincerely I say, come to me. Let me know. I would be a man of God, and if I am not acting that way, speak to me about it. I have that responsibility before God and to you as my brothers and sisters in Christ, that I am to live in submission to you as you are to me, one another in community, in the body of Christ. It is an attitude that comes directly from our Lord and Savior, and it defines who we are as Christians, in community and love of one another. Submission is not a dirty word. This morning, this is how we are to act voluntarily being respectful one towards another, even more so looking for opportunities to demonstrate that we are no better than any of our other fellow believers, but we take seriously their needs and interests into account. Matthew Henry said this, Humility preserves peace. Well, actually, humility preserves peace and order in all Christian churches and societies. Pride disturbs them. Albert Barnes said, treat one another with deference and respect. Are we able to do that this morning? If not, may God renew a right spirit within us. In conclusion this morning, Francis Chan, Francis Chan was a pastor, uh, now a highly um, recognized author and speaker. And in, in one of his books, he said this. He said, people do not want to submit to authority. And part of the reason for that is they fear that leaders will abuse their authority over others. We may have encountered situations like that. And he questioned, where is the humility, especially within the church? Because everybody is fighting for the right to be right. 
Does that make sense? Everybody's fighting for the right to be right. The statement he made is this. We've got to believe less in our opinions and more in our prayers. We've got to believe less in our opinions and more in our prayers. May we make time to pray for our fellow believers and let the Spirit guide us how we are to live within community. Let's close in prayer. Lord God, we come before you this morning, and as you speak to us through your word, we see this aspect of submitting to one another, Lord, out of love, but also out of fear and reverence for who you are. We pray that, that really you do, that, that you speak to, to our spirit through your spirit, to give us guidance that we may look for opportunities to, Lord, shore up other people, to encourage them, support them, to walk beside them and assist with carrying their burden, for that is what you have called us to do within this body of believers. May we truly be an example. Lord, may you find us faithful. This we pray in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.